Okay, in this video I want to draw a titration curve, so I think it's time with all the peptides we've drawn so far that we start seeing something else you can do with them. So I drew out the pentapeptide here, it's isoleucine, phenylalanine, histidine, aspartic acid, and valine. And I've also drawn it in a specific way, I've drawn it fully protonated, so all the protons are on each of the groups that could potentially lose one. So this amine group over here, the histidine has its proton in a positive charge, aspartic acid has its proton on the OH here. The carboxyl group on the end has the OH, has its OH. And what I also did was I said at which pH each one of those would lose a proton, which is important because that's exactly how we're going to set up the um, titration curve. So in order to draw a titration curve, basically what you want to do is you want to set up your axis, which will be, you know, equivalence of NaOH on the y-axis and pH on the x-axis. So now that we have that, the next thing to do that I like to do is I like to say, well, what is the charge on this pentapeptide when it's fully protonated? So let's just look at that for a second. We got a positive one over here, we got a positive two over here, so we got a plus two overall charge. So what I like to do then is I like to say, okay, we're starting at plus two. Now, once I go over here and I go and I add enough equivalence of NaOH, then I'm going to cross PK1. And PK1 is, is basically the proton that's going to be lost first. So that's going to be the OH on the end over here. So that's going to be the first one to go, and that's going to bring us to a plus one charge. Then we're going to go again here, PK2, and we're going to look up here and see which one's going to its proton next. And that would be aspartic acid over here, because it has a, at a pH of 3.9, it loses this proton. So that gives us a zero charge. Now we'll do the same thing again and we'll say okay PK3 so we'll look for the third group that will lose its proton and that's going to be a toss-up between histidine and this amine group over here but it's going to be histidine because it loses a proton at pH of 6. So as we're as we're adding more and more NaOH, the solution is becoming more and more basic. So our pH is going up, essentially, is what's going on here. So this will give us a minus one charge. And then the last group to lose its proton will be this one over here, and that will be PK4. So that's PK4, and it will be minus two. So now what you want to do is you essentially want to label the graph and draw the curve. So over here I'm going to say 3.5 and then I'm going to say 6 and then I'm going to say 8.5 up here as my pH values. And so essentially the first thing you want to do is go to that first value and then flatten the curve out right there. Just like that. And you want to mark this 3.5 here as our first PK1. So PK1 is right there. Now, the second group to lose a proton is this 3.9, is at 3.9 over here. So it's going to be a very, very small jump like that and then flatten out. And we'll mark that spot there. And that will be our PK2. So that's PK2. And the next group to lose its proton is going to be the histidine. And that's at 6. So this is going to jump up like this. And it's going to flatten out around 6 like that. And that's PK3. So that's our third proton that we're going to lose. And the last proton that we're going to lose is the one on the amine group, and that's at 8.5. So this shoots up to 8.5, and it flattens out like that. 
and basically looks just like that. And we mark this here and we say PK4. So what we've done so far is we've drawn the titration curve and we've labeled the PK values. Basically the values at which the groups lose a proton as we're adding NaOH. So if we're going to say how many equivalents of NaOH added, we just look here at this point right here where we move to the next one and say that's one equivalent. This is two equivalents. This is three equivalents. And the final one over here is four equivalents of NaOH added. So, so far that's our graph. And the question was asking us not only to draw the titration curve and show the pKa, a values on there. It's also saying calculate the PI. So you might be wondering what the hell this PI is. Well, the PI is also known as the isoelectric point. And that's the point, at, it's the pH at which a molecule carries no net charge. So it's the pH where the molecule carries no net charge. So the charge is zero. Now that's exactly why I drew this up here. Because basically the two pK the basically from this we're going to use these two pKa values up here, pK two and pK three, and we're going to plug those into the equation for the isoelectric point. So the PI is equal to one half, and basically it's just one half times the pKa value where it's plus one and the pKa value where it's minus one, crossing through the zero. So we already said that pK2 is a spartic acid at 3 point at 3.9 up here. So we're going to plug in 3.9 and we're going to say that's plus the other group which is pk3 and we said pk3 would be the histidine at 6. So that would be 6. So now we have everything we need to make the calculation and if you plug it into a calculator you'll wind up with 5. It's actually 4.95 but I'm sure you can round up to 5. Now we should also mark that point on the graph. So we'll go over here and we'll look for 5 and we'll say well 5 is somewhere like about here. So I'll mark that on the graph and I'll label that as PI and that becomes the PI. Now also besides cal calculating the PI they want us to share the buffer regions in this problem so I will do that by just making a little squiggly line to say that this is roughly the buffer region here, this is a buffer region here, and this will also be a buffer region up here. And if you recall from the previous video that I said that the buffer regions, you know, maximum buffer capacity is where the pH is equal to the pKa. So your maximum buffer and capacity is going to be at 3.5, 3.0, um, not 3.9 rather, because that's actually not a good buffering region here. This region here is actually not, this region right here is actually not a good buffering region. That's why I didn't mark it. It's, it's too small of a gap. But anyway, the P, where the pH is equal to the pKa is where you're going to have the greatest buffering capacity, but that's also within plus or minus one pKa value. So each one of those regions extends a little bit. And, and um, other than that, that's about all you need to do to draw one of these um, titration curves. They're not all that difficult once you get the hang of it. Um, I hope I explained this PI for you guys correctly, uh, you know, in a way that you can understand. Um, essentially, the isoelectric point is the point at which a molecule carries no net electrical charge. 
So by drawing this little setup up here that I drew where I said, okay, PK1 is from plus 2 to plus 1. We lose, you know, we lose one proton. Then from PK2 to PK3, we lose another proton. We got a net charge of 0. Then from PK3 to PK4, we lose another one. So basically from there, you'll be a, you'll be able to see visually by doing it this way where the molecule has zero net charge and that's right in between pk2 and pk3 so you want to use the value for pk2 and the value for pk3 for your isoelectric point because right in the middle of between those two values is where you're going to find that the molecule, or in this case the pentapeptide, has no net charge. And that's exactly what the equation says. We're adding the two values together and we're dividing by two. So we're going right in the middle between the two points that cross through the zero. So not a, not a totally difficult concept there. And once you get the hang of drawing these, it, it's going to be quite easy. Um, there's not really all that much to it. Essentially, they just want to see that you can show where the pKa values are. You, you understand the buffering region, and you understand, like, for instance, this is not a good buffering region here, but these, these regions are adequate. There's plenty of buffering capacity in those areas. And, you know, it depends. I mean, you can get more crazy with the, um, with the line here and say, oh, I want to add, you know, more values in here and make it more accurate. You can do that, too. But generally, this would be good enough to uh, get full credit on an exam question. So that's about all I want to say about titration curves for now. I might do another one because I, I feel like, you know, I want everybody to understand this. So thanks.